aquatic invertebrate sampling you know uh, aquatic invertebrate uh, are one of the uh, major uh, indicator of uh, pollution or uh, degradation of an ecosystem we use uh, aquatic invertebrate uh, to determine the water quality and habitat quality of uh, uh, any aquatic ecosystem estuarine ecosystem and uh, even marine ecosystem so today we will focus uh, on the various uh, sampling techniques which are used for the aquatic uh, invertebrate sampling aquatic invertebrate uh, have a very good assemblage in less polluted uh, streams and rivers as uh, the water quality changes sensitive macro invertebrate uh, will disappear uh, from that uh, segment of stream or uh, river in most of the cases uh, you can say aquatic uh, biologist uh, and uh, environmentalist uh, use macro invertebrate uh, as uh, a pollution indicator for the assessment of uh, any habitat uh, with uh, uh, macro invertebrate uh, point of view that uh, there must be some efficient sam sampling methods uh, which give us uh, a clear picture of an ecosystem so for uh, application of uh, any sampling technique uh, you must aware uh, about the various uh, aspects of uh, uh, sampling and which sampling technique uh, is suitable for the uh, macro invertebrate because uh, these uh, aquatic invertebrate uh, are uh, best indicator for uh, water pollution there are several techniques uh, which are used for the sampling of uh, for the sampling of uh, you can say macro invertebrate uh, some are specific to the particular habitat uh, of uh, macro organism uh, some techniques are uh, generally used for uh, common water developing uh, macro invertebrate both biotic and abiotic factors uh, in flowing water uh, and ponds uh, influence the uh, water quality and uh, macro invertebrate uh, distribution in an ecosystem netting is the simplest uh, sampling method uh, which we use to invertebrate uh, from streams uh, sh uh, shallow streams uh, wadeable streams uh, uh, for macro invertebrate we have uh, different types of uh, net uh, which are uh, available in market uh, and these uh, nets are uh, also available in environmental toxicology lab of college of earth and environmental sciences uh, this uh, uh, net is used for the uh, bottom developer uh, macro invertebrate sampling however uh, this, uh, this uh, long net uh, uh, you can say long mesh net uh, also suitable for the pelagic as well as uh, surface fauna of uh, and uh, this is the smallest mesh net uh, which is suitable for the sampling uh, uh, of pelagic uh, and uh, surface dwelling uh, macro invertebrate so uh, different types of uh, nets uh, we can use for uh, uh, the catch of uh, pelagic and uh, uh, surface and uh, bottom dwelling uh, uh, macro invertebrates pelagic mean uh, that area which is uh, you can say open water and uh, some macro invertebrate uh, are living uh, um, at uh, water column uh, even at the surface of uh, if benthic uh, uh, invertebrate uh, benthic mean which are developing at the uh, bottom of stream or river or any pond uh, such invertebrates are known as uh, benthic invertebrates uh, and uh, these uh, uh, benthic invertebrates require different uh, types of uh, uh, nets and uh, these uh, nets are uh, designed according to the requirement of uh, sampling so uh, here uh, we have uh, uh, some types of uh, nets uh, just like uh, this is the d net which i am using uh, for the collection of uh, uh, macro invertebrate uh, from river ravi 
this uh, net is uh, uh, known as a d-shaped net and uh, this d-shaped net uh, was used uh, for the collection of uh, uh, macro invertebrate uh, and uh, 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 small fishes uh, uh, we dip this net uh, and drag on the surface of uh, surface of uh, bottom uh, and uh, collect animals along with the sediments so uh, such techniques uh, are also known as the kick uh, sampling method second type of uh, method uh, that is belly wheel mosquito larvae sampler in this uh, uh, one is inverted funnel uh, which is used for the collection of uh, larvae and uh, other uh, is the cylindrical structure with which we uh, dip in the uh, water and later on we attach the funnel which is uh, provided with mesh macro invertebrates spatiomene presence and absence of different macro invertebrate species uh, along the uh, riverine stretch is amrad kya hai ek river ki mukhtalif sites ke upar sample lena temporal mean time scale if we sample during spring we should also consider the summer factor autumn factor and uh, during winter uh, some of macro invertebrate hibernate so we use some screens and uh, this is the screen net which uh, we use uh, uh, for the collection of uh, macro invertebrate uh, in wadeable and shallow streams wadeable streams hum kise kehte hain jo kam gehri streams hoti hain jisme hum chal bhi sakte hain we place this screen at the bottom against the flow of water in front of this screen we disturb the uh, substratum and uh, different uh, uh, you can say uh macro organisms uh, macro invertebrates which are attached to the uh, stones pebbles and sand uh, will be dislodged and ultimately collected in this screen so such type of uh, uh, nets which we use to collect the attached macro invertebrate uh, are uh, known as uh, uh, screens or uh, you can say kick nets we have to standardize the efforts uh, of ca uh, catching uh, of such uh, invertebrates uh, if we sample at one place for 3 minute definitely we have to apply a same interval on the other side so uh, at one side suppose uh, we make 20 efforts for the collection of uh, attached uh, macro invertebrate definitely we have to repeat uh, it uh, on other side sample sample sampler uh, this is uh, an other type of uh, sampler uh, this uh, uh, rectangle and uh, uh, this rectangle is settled on at the bottom of uh, stream and here is uh, we have uh, collecting vessel and uh, such uh, Sample samplers uh, are placed against the flow of uh, uh, water velocity. We disturb the substratum uh, in front of uh, the sampler, and uh, after uh, disturbance of uh, uh, substratum, animals uh, attached to the substratum, pebbles, stones, and uh, uh, sand will dislodge and ultimately reach to the uh, collecting vessels. so this is a comparatively better form of a sampler uh, in which we display the number of uh, attached macro invertebrate uh, per unit area so normally we uh, keep the this uh, a frame of uh, sampler 1 uh, square feet or 1 uh, square meter it depend upon the depth and uh, type of river and stream server samplers uh, uh, we standardize such sample uh, samplers uh, and uh, such samplers uh, are also act as quadrate so these quadrates are used for the uh, bottom developer uh, macro invertebrate after uh, 
completion of uh, specific time. We collect the macro invertebrate uh, from this uh, collecting vessel and uh, then store into the jar and uh, storing agents are normally used uh, alcohol or formally. Nowadays, uh, we are uh, preferring uh, alcohol because uh, uh, it is comparatively good preservator and uh, safe uh, uh, in comparison with the formula. So we have uh, another type of uh, sampler, which is uh, a sampler. This can be useful for sampling of uh, uh, bottom invertebrate. We fix this uh, uh, cylinder on the bottom and uh, uh, we keep uh, this mesh towards the water flow and uh, water move inside the pipe and flow away from this net. And at the end of this net, uh, we have collecting vessels. Uh, as we disturb this bottom under this sampler, water flow will continue and the animals uh, will move towards the, this uh, collecting funnel. So in this uh, uh, sampler, uh, we will uh, get maximum macro invertebrate uh, uh, developing in the substratum because there are uh, limited chances uh, uh, to escape the animals uh, from this sampler. So such sampler uh, has sampler uh, also used, used for the sampling of uh, uh, invertebrates uh, uh, from the uh, bottom of uh, streams and uh, river. Even you can apply such samplers uh, for estuaries and uh, coastal areas. Estuaries are the transitional zone between freshwater and uh, marine water. Sampling of uh, column developing invertebrates. Uh, so column developing invertebrates uh, we use uh, uh, some drift nets uh, can be suspended uh, in in the water column such as uh, this is a drift net uh, we can use it uh, and place uh, in the column of uh, uh, water such uh, uh, drift nets uh, uh, are uh, fixed against the uh, flow of water so that's why we can get uh, uh, more and more uh, aquatic uh, column developing uh, invertebrate. Water will move inside the sampler and uh, all macro invertebrates uh, which are living in the water column will be collected by this uh, drift net. So we can uh, such drift net uh, we can make it fixed with the substratum or we can drag it with the help of a board while sampling. So sometimes we fix such drift nets and sometimes we drag it with the help of board. It depends upon the situation and specific species of invertebrate. On the upper surface of uh, uh, nets, we sometimes place uh, floaters, uh, we place uh, iron balls uh, for the sinking of uh, net at the bottom to get uh, maximum representative sample. Second sampler is uh, the plankton net. Such nets are uh, uh, used for the collection of uh, uh, protist, algae, and uh, other microscopic organisms. Uh, uh, we place uh, this net uh, against the flow of uh, water. Water entered in this uh, uh, mesh and all uh, microorganisms uh, uh, are collected uh, in these uh, collecting vessels. So after uh, some time we can collect uh, such vessels uh, from uh, uh, plankton net uh, and uh, preserve uh, microscopic organism algae and protest uh, in different jars uh, and uh, uh, sent 
or transfer uh, such samples to the laboratory for uh, further study. Suction sampling, nowadays uh, you have uh, uh, studied uh, such uh, suction samplers uh, for the dengue sampling. Uh, uh, government of Punjab is using uh, such samplers uh, for the collection of uh, dengue larva. And uh, in uh, case of uh, macro invertebrate uh, research, uh, we are uh, also using uh, for uh, those animals uh, which are living in burrows. So suction samplers are, are used for uh, those animals uh, which are living in aquatic burrows. We insert such samplers uh, inside uh, burrows and then we suck uh, the water and during suction of water what will happen animals small invertebrates uh, will come inside the tube and uh, this tube will be vacated uh, inside a jar ek jar ke andar usko hum vacate kar lenge then we transfer that jar to the laboratory for the study of uh, animals benthic coring uh, coring is appropriate uh, uh, term for the muddy sandy ecosystems uh, and such samp samplers uh, we use for the study of uh, ecosystem in estuarine coastal and uh, marshy areas you can sample invertebrate uh, uh, through coring uh, from shallow uh, areas uh, which have uh, less depth. Uh, uh, whenever you wade in such shallow streams, uh, uh, you can dra drag it uh, by while you are walking uh, within the stream. Benthic coring is ke liye hum kya karte hain jo soil substratum hai, jo river or streams ka bed hota hai, wahan pe hum uh, sample lete hain. To ye sample hum simple wo dragging ke zariye bhi sample le sakte hain. Or iske alawa some time usko hum boat ke saath bhi attach karke ye sample le sakte hain. For this purpose we have the naturalist dredge and uh, the mouth of uh, this uh, sampler is made up of metal frame and uh, when we drag on the bottom surface of uh, any estuary or river stream or coastal area uh, animals uh, from the from bottom will be collected inside the mesh and then we will study these macro invertebrate so such samplers scrap the animals uh, from the sediment surface such samplers uh, uh, could be good for the collection of uh, sediment dwelling uh, animals uh, naturalist dredge uh, is used for uh, shallow water whereas uh, drags dredges and uh, grabs are uh, used for uh, deep water dredge is a net that is uh, pulled along the bottom and uh, disturb the river bottom with blades uh, these are the blades uh, when we drop the sampler uh, at the bottom surface uh, it will disturb the bottom uh, surface uh, and uh, collect the sample inside it and uh, this is also sampler uh, it has sharp blade when it fall on the uh, bottom surface uh, surface sediment from uh, deep river or uh, estuaries so these two grab grabs are used for uh, the collection of uh, invertebrates uh, from deep rivers and uh, uh, even it can be used in deep coastal areas a is the figure of uh, ekman grabs and uh, b is the figure of uh, uh, peterson grab Ackman is a manual grab, uh, whereas uh, Peterson is a uh, weight-based uh, mechanical grab. When this uh, sampler fall on the surface of sediment and uh, we pull it, when we pull it, the whole uh, surface area, if it is one meter square, uh, it will uh, collect it inside the grab sampler. So that extraction that extraction you know sieving mud sand is an option 
when sample have been taken from the core or grabs. After uh, collection of uh, sample from grab, we subject it uh, to the sieving. This is the sieve which was used uh, uh, after the collection of uh, macroinvertebrates uh, and uh, mud was uh, through uh, flowing water on these invertebrate uh, and uh, macro invertebrate uh, collected and transferred to the laboratory. So after uh, collection of mud and sand samples, uh, we can subject such samples uh, for the separation of uh, invertebrate uh, from the sand and uh, mud. For example, we have uh, another uh, funnel uh, which is known as uh, Bearman funnel. Uh, this is the funnel, and uh, we have a sample. And around the sample, we place gauze or uh, muslin uh, cloth. Uh, you can heat up this water up to certain uh, tolerable limits uh, to the macro invertebrates. Uh, when we uh, heat up this sample with the help of bulb, the macro invertebrates. Uh, like uh, nematodes uh, will come out uh, inside the water and uh, uh, these nematodes uh, later on uh, will be extracted uh, uh, through this uh, pipe when we uh, lose this clump uh, this water was drained into stainer and uh, from stainer we collect uh, all the macro invertebrates such as nematodes uh, preserve them for the further identification. Uh, last we have uh, hemming tray and uh, this uh, tray have a large surface area and we increase the, the large surface area and uh, place the uh, separate the sample on the bottom of this metal gauze we place and then it covered with the help of uh, sterile sand. Sterile means uh, completely sterilized soil uh, after uh, baking at uh, 100 plus degrees centigrade. Then we place uh, water uh, up to 5 centimeter depth uh, as an upper layer and uh, we place uh, it uh, uh, for 24 to 48 hours. Nematodes uh, will come out through gauze. These animals ultimately come from the part of sand and uh, uh, water. So after that, uh, uh, we collect uh, uh, upper sand surface and uh, uh, water for the separation of uh, nematodes. Both methods, uh, hemming tray and uh, uh, Bearman funnels are used for the extraction of uh, uh, nematodes and uh, such techniques we also use for the soil dwelling uh, nematodes. Sir, pelagic ka matlab ad aad Pelagic is open water. Ek hota hai ke river ke kinaron ke paas, ek river ke center mein jo water hota hai, open water, usko hum pelagic water ka naam deete hai. Thank you. Sir, suction sampling ko repeat kar de. Ye dekhe, humare paas ek क्या है सक्शन पंप सैंपल है ये पंप जब हम इसको खींचते हैं तो यहां पे क्या होता है एक वैक्यूम पैदा होता है ऐसे सक्शन सैंपलर्स हम कहां पे यूज करते हैं जब पानी के अंदर مختلف एनिमल्स जो इनवर्टिब्रेट हैं उन्होंने छोटी-छोटी क्या बरोज बनाई होती हैं उन बरोज के अंदर हम ये सैंपलर इंसर्ट करते हैं और इसको सक करते हैं तो इस के दौरान उस बरो के अंदर जो एनिमल्स मौजूद होंगे वो इस सैंपलर के अंदर आ जाएंगे और इस सैंपलर को फिर हम जार के अंदर ब्रिकेट कर लेंगे और जार के अंदर जब हम ब्रिकेट करेंगे तो फिर क्या होगा फिर उसको हम अल्कोहल में प्रिजर्व करके लेबोरेटरी की तरफ भेज देंगे इसी तरह के छोटे-छोटे सक्शन पंप क्या किया जाता है इनको यूज किया जाता है uh, for uh, dengue larva collection from different uh, uh, water bodies, uh, especially जो जहाँ पे इसके dengue के larva grow कर रहे होते हैं, वहाँ पे मुख्तलिब dengue inspector जो है, वो आके larva collect करते हैं.
ओके सर थैंक यू जी सर वो आपने एक्चुअली सर्वर सैंपलर में कुछ एक वर्ड बोला था वन स्क्वायर फीट या वन स्क्वायर मीटर सर वो क्या बात उसमें उसका साइज वन स्क्वायर फीट जो है वो छोटा साइज होता है और वन स्क्वायर मीटर साइज बड़ा होगा और ये उसका जो फ्रंट का फ्रेम होता है उसकी बात कर रहे थे हम तो मैं उस स्लाइड पे लेके जाता हूँ ताकि आपको उसका ज्यादा बेहतर पता चल जाए ये हमारे पास जो है ये सर्वर सैम्पलर है ये इसका क्या है और इसकी जो है हम देखते हैं कि ये आगे एक ट्रायंगुलर स्टैंड है ये इसलिए होता है ताकि ये बॉटम के साथ एडजस्ट कर दे हम यहाँ पे जो सबस्टेटम है उसको डिस्टर्ब करते हैं और जो स्टोन्स और पेबल्स के साथ एनिमल्स अटैच होते हैं वो अल्टीमेटली इसके अंदर चले जाते हैं और ये एंड पे एक वैसल होती है इस वैसल के अंदर फिर हम एनिमल्स को कलेक्ट कर लेते हैं तो ये अब अगर हमने कंपैरेटिवली थोड़े से बड़े एनिमल्स को कलेक्ट करना है तो फिर इसके फ्रेम का साइज जो है वो बढ़ा रखेंगे अगर हमने छोटे एनिमल्स को कलेक्ट करना है तो फिर हम इसका साइज भी क्या रखेंगे छोटा रखेंगे इसके अलावा इसके मैश जो है जो जाली होती है इसका साइज भी हम अपनी मर्जी से रखते हैं अगर हमने स्मॉलर ऑर्गेनिज्म कलेक्ट करने हैं देन वी विल चूज यू कैन से नैरो पोर मैश साइज सर बेंथिक कोरिंग एक दफा दोबारा से बता दें किसको अच्छा बेंथिक पोर हम किसे कहते हैं जब हम सैंपलर को यूज करते हैं ना तो उसके सेडिमेंट की कोर्स लेयर्स होती हैं एक अपर सरफेस फिर उससे इंटरमीडिएट फिर डीप कोर्स ये कोर्स क्या होती है लेयर्स होती हैं तो बेंथिक किसे कहते हैं जो बॉटम की लेयर्स होती हैं अब हो सकता है टॉप लेयर पे और ऑर्गेनिज्म रहते हैं मिडल में और रहते हैं और डीप लेयर्स में कुछ और इनवर्टिब्रेट रहते हैं तो वो हम डिपेंड करता है कि किस टाइप के मैक्रो इनवर्टिब्रेट या इनवर्टिब्रेट को हमने कलेक्ट करना है तो उसके लिए हम पेंथिक पोरिंग की टर्म यूज करते हैं यस सर वो मैंने पूछना है कि क्या हैस सैंपलर और सर्वर सैंपलर ये आपस में सेम है या नहीं डिफरेंट है यानी हैस इसी टाइप है सर्वर की आ, ये जो हमारे पास हैस सैंपलर है इसमें ये है कि जब हम बॉटम को डिस्टर्ब करते हैं यहाँ से ऊपर से सपोज किसी की मदद से बॉटम को डिस्टर्ब करते हैं तो उसमें एनिमल जो सबस्टेटम के साथ अटैच होते हैं वो डिसलॉज होते हैं और डिसलॉज होने के साथ क्या होता है वाटर फ्लो इस तरफ होता है और ये फिर एनिमल इस तरफ आ जाते हैं और इस कलेक्टिंग वैसल में इकट्ठे हो जाते हैं और फिर इनको हम कलेक्ट कर लेते हैं अब इस सैंपलर में और इसमें फर्क ये है कि है सैंपलर में एनिमल्स के लॉस का चांस चांसेस जो हैं वो क्या होते हैं कम होते हैं जबकि इस सैंपलर में क्या है अगर हमने इधर से डिस्टर्ब किया कुछ एनिमल हो सकता है ये इसके बाहर से निकल जाएं कुछ इस तरफ निकल जाएं तो इस वजह से जो है ये प्रॉब्लम हो सकता है नो सर थैंक यू अच्छा कोई और स्टूडेंट पूछना चाहे तो हैंड रेज करे ये सर ये प्लेजिक का बता दें एक दफा प्लेजिक हम किसे कहते हैं ओपन वाटर एक होता है किनारों के करीब उसको हम प्लेजिक वाटर नहीं कहते एक होता है बॉटम के करीब उसको हम बेंथिक कहते हैं एक होता है जो वाटर सरफेस सेंटर में पानी होता है ओपन होता है उसका नीचे बॉटम के साथ भी और किनारों के साथ भी ताल्लुक नहीं होता तो उस वाटर को हम प्लेजिक वाटर ओपन वाटर ओके सर थैंक यू ठीक है अपना अपने घर वालों का अपने इर्द गिर्द के लोगों का सब का ख्याल रखिएगा और नए ख्वाहिशात के साथ आपको खुदा हाफिज